On, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the 18th expansion packed episode of the Switch It Up Show. I'm here, I'm your host today. I am at Seth Trap, joined as always by our friend Glenn. He is at From the Crib. How you doing today, buddy? I'm doing very well, sir. I, you know, this music always gets me fired up, and that's a really good thing because, oh my god, do we have a full plate on our hands today, sir. We do, my dude. Uh, it's jock jammed, as always. Oh. So there's not going to be any news. We are powerless. Uh, no power ups today because we've got too many continues saved up. We got to hear all about the new releases. There's like 15, 20 of them. <laughs> so many. We're going to go through all of those as well as a review, two reviews of two incredibly great games. Uh, that's all coming up later on on the Switch It Up show. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, Anamanaguchi, get at them. If they ever come to town, we're all getting tickets and we're going. Every one of us. We'll do a live cut with them. Be phenomenal. Anywho, uh, it's time for the inventory. We're going to dig through, see what we're playing this week on the Nintendo Switch. Our friend Glenn, what are you up to? What are you playing? Uh, right now, man, like I, I really can't get enough of... Uh, I, said it, I said it a couple episodes ago, and I got right back into it, and I'm having a good time at Physical Contact Speed. It's kind of like this silly little uh, silly little like war game with cards. Uh, I, I think it's fun. Uh, and I'm actually also making good on my promise to get back into Zelda. I can happily say that I'm about to start the boss of the second... You know, I think in Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time thought process. So I'm going to say I'm about to start the boss of the second temple, um, which okay. for me is like the sky one. Um, I don't know if you have you beat two bosses oh. in uh, Breath of the Wild or I, no? I did. I beat two and I'm currently spot. in the dungeon for my third. Okay. Okay. What um, order did you do it in? But I stopped it like two months ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the order I did it in was first I went to the water one, which is in the elephant. Yep. Me too. Uh, and then I went to the mountain the volcano and i did the scorpion one that's funny because a lot of i hear that from a lot of people that that's the order that it's cool because they don't really give you an order you have to follow um mm -hmm. but like for me i just happened to come across the one in the sky next um which is which is gonna be awesome i hope i don't know i think by all accounts i should have gone to uh the volcano first just based on how difficult it was for me to do that first that's what people dungeon. yeah me too that's what i hear too that i just you know I don't know. It was crazy hard for me, man. I, I I don't know. Like it and then when I got it, I didn't get hit like once and I just like went and I was like, mm -hmm. wow, this was so much easier than I was making it. Yeah, it kind of sets But Zelda's Zelda's always great, man. Uh have you touched any of the uh expanded content yet? Oh no, dude. Like <laughs> I'm you still I'm still yes. working um I'm still working my way through like you know, definitely still working my way through the main story. You know, like we uh like we said earlier in the show intro, like there's like there's 10 plus games coming out this week. We are just drowning in Switch releases. There are so many games to, you know, play and be played um, that, uh, like, extra content, I'm sure I'll get to at some point. But there's just so much to play, man. Someone's got to do it. I know, right? Um, so what I've been playing this week, I uh, don't want to get too much into it, but I did spend a good portion of my week playing uh, SteamWorld Dig 2. Yes, you certainly um, did, man. I want to I wanna leave it there because that is going to be one of the games that we're reviewing later on this episode. So that's it for the inventory. Let's close our satchels. Let's get back on our horses. Ride on out <laughs> uh, because there's no power-ups. We're out of them. Uh, we're going to go straight into it, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to press continue. Yes, sir, that's ladies right, and gentlemen. That's right. It's our segment. <laughs> Sorry, man. I thought I was leading this one off, and I'm gonna just go ahead and steal steal the ball right out of your hands because we gotta just take it and run, and we're gonna go ahead and run away with ACA Neo Geo Burning Fight, another one of those Neo Geo ports that you can get um, over on the Nintendo Switch. Wipe out the evil from Japan and the United States. Brawl with the mobs. Burning Fight is an action game released by SNK in 1991. Japanese and U.S. detectives must work together to risk their lives still infiltrate the enemy hideout of a large syndicate and a crime organization that dominates western japan i mean yes 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds awesome. That sounds great. Um, Burning Fight is a side-scrolling 2D beat-em-up, of course. Um, it is $7.99. And, you know, if that, like, synopsis doesn't get you excited to play it, I don't really know what will. You can go pick up Burning Fight on the 28th of this month. So just one day away. That's right. Uh, next up, we've got a awesome little game called Astro Bears Party. Uh, it is an easy-to-learn, hard-to-master game about running around a planet and avoiding each other's magical berry ribbons. Jump and hover over ribbons using a jetpack. Perform dashes to threaten your opponents. Be the last bear standing. Choose one of four bears with different play styles and battle between two to four players. Take a challenge in a single-player mode and beat your own record in jetfish hunting. Uh, it is a 3D run around a circle party bear in suits game. It looks like $4.99 <laughs> on the eShop currently. Awesome, man. I'm loving that. I'm loving that price point right there. That sounds like a bargain. Dude, mm -hmm. right? And if you love party games like a Mario Party, it seems like you could get a little bit of a fix right here with the Astro Bears. Awesome. Yeah, right? It sounds cute. I think we're actually going to be talking that, about that in the future. Uh, another game coming out this week, because, you know, got to keep it going, is Binaries. Uh, it is $12.99 on the Nintendo Switch. Also comes out tomorrow on the 28th. It is basically what they have they describe it. it says test your skills and reflexes as you simultaneously guide two lovable balls through over 100 controller smashingly tough platform challenges. Control both balls at exactly the same time as you try to avoid the death and danger that awaits their every move. Um, this is um, almost like a 2D, kind of like that like ball puzzle game that you would control like physically, like made out of wood, and like you know you move one knob, you move another. Um, it's kind of like you have to control both of them at the same time. Um, very similar in theory to uh, Death Squared, where you're moving one thing uh, and the other stick's moving another, and you kind of have to balance them off of each other. Uh, it is $12.99 over on the eShop. Binaries uh, looks super cool. Really neat, minimal graphics. Very cool. Um, next up, we've got a two-for-one game. Uh, it's oh. Brave Dungeon plus Dark Witch Story Combat. Uh, it is $8.99. It is on the eShop. Uh, this is a Japanese RPG. Uh, the first one, Brave Dungeon. Sega, a powerful crystal that grants humans the ability to use magic. Some crystals are so powerful they have to be contained in specially prepared vessels. These are known as magic items. <laughs> uh, join intrepid adventurer Al as she explores the dangerous labyrinths of Belfast Island in search of a powerful magical item. Uh, along the way, Al will join forces with strong allies and face even stronger enemies. Can Al conquer the impossible dungeons known as God Shill and find the ultimate magic item? Uh, it is a crawling RPG adventure uh, using a card system. Uh, also, it looks like Dark Witch Story Combat uh, is a battle game where you also use card system featuring characters and creatures from the Dark Witch series. The players pick three cards to use against each other in a best out of three battle. Uh, the players also get to use magic items to give their cards, which can drastically turn the tides of battle. There are two different modes available, quest mode for single player and battle mode for multiplayer. When you play quest mode, you will, uh, you will win new and stronger cards for you to use while aiming for the title of Game Master. So, they both look like they play like the Mega Man Advanced games. Like, if you remember those Mega Man Battle Network games, that kind of style applied. There were like a million of those games. Yeah, and apparently uh, Dark Witch is a series. Uh, so yeah, I could check that out. It definitely looks cool. Awesome, man. It looks well, cool, because I like those Mega Man games. I'm going to go ahead and kind of switch up the, uh, the I don't know, the feeling in the room. We're going to take it from like kind of what sounds like a happy game to a much darker, much darker place. And we're going to go ahead and talk Looks about, sloppy. yeah, this game looks crazy. And this is Butcher. Butcher is $9.99. It says, Butcher is a fast-paced 2D shooter and a blood-soaked love letter to the cult classics of the genre. As a cyborg program <laughs> to eradicate the last remnants of humanity, your sir sole purpose is well to annihilate anything that moves. Grab your weapon of choice from chainsaws to shotguns to rocket launchers and kill your way through the underground hideout, hideouts, oh, post-apocalyptic cities, jungles, and more. If you're feeling creative, there are also plenty of other ways to end your enemy's misery. Hooks, lava, pits, saws, no death will ever be the same again. Um, this game looks insane. 
<laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Just the box art is, is like it's nuts. Wild it's looking. Nuts. Um, it's nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Uh, it is a side scrolling like um, just I don't know kill everything game. Um, Contra style. Yeah, it does look Contra style, and the graphics look a little um, like. I mean, they're not six. I don't know. They're like in between. Like, let's go like sixteen and a half bit if that's a thing. Looks a little worse than like PlayStation One, um, but uh, I don't know. Nine dollars, nine nine cents. Butcher looks like a good time. Yeah, definitely would. That looks like a good game to check out. Uh, next up, we've got Conga Master Party. Uh, the dance floor fills. The line gets longer. Come on down. It's time to conga. Shake your virtual hips to the ridiculously fun arcade action of Conga Master as everyone fights to make the longest conga line possible. No rhythm required. Anyone can conga. Uh, Playing Conga Master couldn't be easier. Steer your dancers across the floor, adding people to your line as you go. Longer congas let you add people faster, but watch out for pigs stinking up your line. Even better, drag three friends onto the dance floor for some local multiplayer conga madness and see who will become the true conga pasta. There's over 40 characters in this game. Uh, it is amiibo compatible, uh, multiplayer arcade style, costing you only $9.95. This is like a hipster centipede, I want to say. Very 8-bit looking. Uh, I can already see a reference to The Simpsons just on this one screenshot that they have here uh, in one of their characters. And it looks like that game Tiny Towers, if you know Tiny Towers from any of your devices, your mobile devices. Awesome, man. But awesome. I would I would check this out. It looks like it looks like it could be really fun. <laughs> it looks kind of unique. I like your what'd you say? Hipster what? Centipede? Uh, it looks like a hipster version of Centipede. Interesting. Interesting, man. Um, Not Centipede. Uh, snake. Snake, hipster snake, snake. snake. So I'm going to go ahead and continue kind of like the interesting uh, type of games. And we are going to talk about Demo. Demo is $29.99 uh, over in the eShop. And basically, they describes it as a fantasy rhythm game. Demo is a simple rhythm game set in a fantasy world filled with beautiful imagery. Touch the quote-unquote notes that stream towards the screen in time with the music. The system is easy to understand, and the players are able to enjoy gameplay which resembles playing a piano. There are over 200 pieces of music to choose from, with difficulty levels of easy, normal, and hard. Suitable for rhythm game beginners and experienced players who need a more who need more of a challenge. Um, looks super super stylized the graphics in this um like you know it's done in like an anime um way everything looks like hand-drawn like cartoons and like manga uh it looks really it looks really neat i do kind of like a rhythm game on the switch i really like boaz uh, and this seems like more mm-hmm. of like a story like possible like driven uh version of that story driven boaz yeah it looks cool uh it's 29.99 so it's a little bit on the pricier side but i mean it looks cool man demo go check it out very cool. Next up, uh, another one that's off the course. It's Golf Story, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> uh, golf Story combines the sheer excitement of golf with a serious story that plays out over eight different courses. Play the story of a golfer who was forced to give up all that he holds dear for one last shot at accomplishing his dreams. But all is not so simple in the world of golf. To best today's players, you have to be able to keep up with them both on and off the course uh golf story it is a action role-playing sports game i don't really know how much golf comes into it uh it looks like a little bit just a little bit of golf is in this one it looks like it's fairly story heavy um i hope you're essentially playing through the story of caddyshack it is 14.99 on the e-shop that's a little pricey for me uh to maybe want to run out and pick up. I'm going to have to check out the trailer definitely later on because this could be an awesome concept game. Awesome, man. Yeah, this game, I saw the preview for this. It looks it looks pretty cool. It looks like a good time. It might it might be worth that you uh, taking a peek. And continuing with our crazy like new releases extravaganza, the next game that we're going to talk about is Inversus Deluxe. This is 14.99 over on the eShop. 
It says, with 50 unique maps, hundreds of unlockable items, AI bots, and online ranked multiplayer, this is the definitive version of Inversus. The playfield looks simple at first glance, but once the action begins, complexity unfolds at a rapid pace. Player movement is constrained to opposite colors of black and white. Uh, my walls are your paths, and your walls are my paths. Each shop flips color tiles in an attempt to block, trap, and close in on the enemy. Up to four players can compete in versus mode, and up to two players can compete in arcade mode. Play with your friends on the couch, online, or both at once. Hone your skills against the computer, and then head online to enter the global ranks. Um, in this one, it looks like you know one color is black, one is white. You guys are flipping through, trying to get towards the end of the level. Um, this almost looks like... Um, a, like a 2D like board game. Uh, looks super interesting. Uh, $14.99 over on the eShop. Uh, if you have checked out Versus and would like to tell me a little bit more about it, kind of what to expect from it, go ahead and send us a tweet over at Switch It Up Show. I would love to hear a little bit more about this because it looks super neat. Yeah, looks real neat. Sounds neat. Uh, another one looking awesome to me right now this looks cool. uh, is going to be uh, Pankapoo. That's pronounced beautifully, Pankapoo. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? I said um, that's pronounced beautifully. I'm sure. You know, Pankapoo. I think you're. Uh, I'm, I'm not being sarcastic. I, I, hope I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. Jump into a neo retro adventure with Pankapoo, a taste of '90s platformers in an Oneric, Oneric, Oneric world. Uh, Pankapoo is a narrative action platformer that takes place in the dreams of Dajarel's Dajarel, a child troubled by tragic incidences. Uh, upgrade your skills, find new competencies, switch your Aegis in real time in order to get rid of Nightmare's Invasion. Fight for your safety. Fight for the safety of your land, dear Dreamkeeper. Uh, pulled in the manner of a fable read to a child, the game has two levels of reading. The Tale of Pankapoo, epic and naive, and the one about Dajaral's life in the real world, dark and tragic. Uh, stylistically, it looks super Disney. It looks super cool. Immediately, I'm thinking like the Aladdin game on the SNES uh, or my Sega Genesis. So I would definitely check this one out. It is $11.99 right now on the eShop. Again, well, not technically right now because it is still coming out on September 28th, 2017. Well, I mean, if you're going to be like similar to some other games, those Disney like retro 16-bit games are <clears throat> where you want to be, man. Like that's that, that's a good time. Yeah, I was actually playing through uh, DuckTales uh, the other day, uh, the newly HD remastered one on the PS3 with my uh, niece. So it was really cool to get back into like those Disney games. Um, and I've been having a hankering to play like Magic Mansion again. That's great. That old game. Mickey. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, I could do that. I think <laughs> the um, so they have the remastered Capcom Disney Collection. Uh, it was on sale on PSN uh, the other week. I don't know if um, oh if that yeah, one, I remember that. I don't know if that one's included in it, but if it it's worth heading over to uh, PSN, I check it out and and see because it's definitely worth it. Um, next up is you know by my favorite people, uh, physical contact <laughs> picture place. Now bear with me because like. This you know this developer like their hearts in the right place, um, but you uh, love a little physical contact. I, I do, don't, don't we all? <laughs> uh, this uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best with this description here. This puzzle game uh, called Number Place is difficult, but feeling of achievement when solved is very high. This game was improved to look good, easy to play as it was with the basic rules intact. That game is Picture Place. It is. A game series where two people can play against each other. So ingenuity has been devised so that you can enjoy this game with two people. Any two partners, including parents, friends, and lovers, are suitable. If you use the handicap function, you can level the playing field. Because the match times are short, you can play anytime, anywhere, wherever you feel like it. Of course, there is also a single player mode. Please enjoy it together. Those are all your details that they give you for physical contact picture place. Now, <laughs> this is the same problem I have with physical contact speed, where it was just like <laughs> cards laid down on a table. And I'm like, this looks like solitaire. Is this solitaire? And sure enough, it was kind of like solitaire mixed with war. Um, this one, let me tell you, anything is like, it, it could be it could be anything. Um, <laughs> the only like screen that they have that's actually like a game screen looks like the Leaning Tower of Pisa is on it, but it's straightened out. And it looks like maybe you're trying to, like, 
maybe rotate it to align these stars to advance to the next level i'm completely guessing okay because you read that description you listened to that description with me so i'm doing my best <laughs> <laughs> that's a wild that being, wild sounding that game. being said we had physical contact speed um on this show we reviewed it and i had a good time with it and again it was 499 just like physical contact picture places so i'm definitely going to be reaching out to these guys to see if we could possibly do a review of physical contact picture plays and i will go ahead and definitely experience it again so i will say i'm one for one on physical contact the, like the series so maybe i'd get stay with all shit. the physical contact my man <laughs> just get them all oh my god it's just so <laughs> weird to say that it's, to you it's it's i don't know man like you can't make this up this is what's in the store <laughs> <laughs> also in the store because it keeps going ladies and gentlemen huge week like we said is pick ross s uh i can almost tell you already that i don't think i would be able to handle this game uh, simple rules. Anyone can play with anyone. Time flies as you play. That's the puzzle game Picross X. Uh, comes with Picross and Mega Picross with 300 puzzles in total, including plenty of difficult levels, traditional Picross with comfortable controls. We brought back the handy assist functions too. Check out the tutorial for more details. Oh. <laughs> Even if you're new to Picross, give it a try. Unique to the Switch version, two players can now play simultaneously. Enjoy with friends. Picross is a picture crossword puzzle game that uses numbers as hints to complete an illustration. The rules are simple and easy to understand so anyone can pick it up and enjoy. Looking at the pictures that they have up here for how this game is supposed to work, I can tell you it looks like the most difficult math that you've ever <laughs> tried to do. And I am not, I, I don't want any part of that. It is seven ninety nine for you to do homework <laughs> on your Nintendo switch. Well, I guess we're going to be passing on that one. I feel like I have to, but at the same time, I'm like, what's the picture going to be? <laughs> you like, know. what does that mean? Well, I appreciate the fact that they at least give you a tutorial, which is a lot better than my man uh, over at Physical Contact. <laughs> so, yeah. like, at least they kind of like walk you through it. It's a shame that you didn't get this next one, and that is Sparkle 2, because this looks like it's right up your alley. Also, for the great <laughs> price of $7.99, Sparkle 2 is a superbly superbly polished marble shooter action puzzle game with beautiful graphics, mighty power-ups, and an amazing soundtrack. Match the orbs before they fall into the abyss and find your way through the mysterious lands of startling beauty. A long time ago, five, five enchanted keys were created. The keys were scattered around the mysterious lands and still remain undiscovered to this day. It doesn't say to this day in there. I added that in for effect because I'm really enjoying this story. <laughs> Many have come to find them and so far, far, all have failed. Will you find the keys and unlock the secrets? Or will you join the endless ranks of souls forever trapped within these lands? That is like the most intense introduction to what looks like um, like snake marble matching game. Like on a rail. <laughs> um, it. I mean, you, you know what though? Like you have me at that story. Like I will match yeah. all of these marbles. Like let's do this. $7.99. Sparkle too. Like let's go. <laughs> I'm ready to sparkle baby shine right That's there. That's man. My God, go ahead. And we, we're not even like I'd like to say we're like this is the last one. Not even close. <laughs> not even. Not even. I think there's like three or four more. Uh, so next up, we've got Tower of Babel. No, not the Justice League series. No, <laughs> not the uh, site in wherever in the world the Tower of Babel was. Uh, this is the game on the Nintendo Switch, and I want to read this. Just I'm going to read this exactly as it is written because it makes no sense to me. This sentence. Get ready to enjoy of a semi-runner gameplay in one, two, three dimensions, exclamation points after that. Okay. It, I, I kind of want to get this game just because I hope the English is as broken and terrible throughout it. Experience the most daring of deeds with the Moork Knight. That's M-O-O-R-K. Moork Knight. Reset the balance of the mysterious Towers of Battle. Challenge yourself in a variety of different one, two, three dimensional environments. Move more slowly, move more quickly, or change track to evade the hundreds of obstacles which will aim to keep you from reaching the summit. Get the jetpack to reach impossible regions in hostile places. Overcome your own challenges by conquering the Towers 
in the shortest time possible. It looks like you run on a track and maybe hit enemies as you come across them. Uh, it looks like you have to jump over various little traps uh, and sort of navigate your way up the Towers of Babel. And it gives you a little meters thing and how much time you have left. It is currently nine ninety nine. I mean, I, I, at least I have an idea of what's going on. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's a positive. Um, it, the screenshot looks interesting. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, this is gonna be super fast. Ready? FIFA eighteen, September twenty ninth, fifty nine ninety nine. Soccer. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> it's the full. It's the full FIFA. Um, FIFA is a hugely popular popular soccer franchise. It's the whole thing. Um, uh, it's one of EA's like first games over on the Nintendo Switch. I mean, you know, you know what FIFA is by now. You have to. I can't. It's I, been I, one. I can't, I can't explain it anymore. Two thousand one. Yeah, I mean, it's got Ultimate Team Career Mode, um, a special Nintendo Switch tailored kickoff mode, local seasons. Uh, FIFA FIFA eighteen on Switch is the deepest portable FIFA ever. Um, awesome. Beautiful. Yeah, that's all. That's all you're getting. <laughs> all right, two more, ladies and gentlemen. This is it? Is, is huh? One more, just one. No, 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 no. We got one here that says September. No, I guess you're right. That could it's technically September. when it pops out. Yeah. So well, it's got to be like September 30th because it doesn't have a date. The I month so. is almost over, ladies and gentlemen. All right. But right now ahead. we're gonna do One Piece Unlimited World Red Deluxe Edition coming out the 29th. Uh, that is this Friday. Yes. 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 Sir. Same day as the SNES Classic. Which you can see an unboxing of that morning on our YouTube channel. Look it up, Preach Unboxing SNES Classic. And we'll probably be doing a little uh, playthrough of Star Fox too if we hit those subscriber goals, eh? 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 I hope so. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we got One Piece. I don't watch the anime. But it's based on the anime. With over 100 million units sold worldwide... Dive back into the wayfaring journey from One Piece Unlimited World Red with the fun-filled escapades, action-packed battles, and powerful comrades from the original Island of Promises storyline. Now all with enhanced graphics and previously released DLC in One Piece Unlimited World Red Deluxe Edition. Uh, Play as members of the Straw Hat Pirate Crew and experience an original storyline that introduced new characters, Peto the Red Count, both designed and developed by series creator Ichiro Oda. The action-adventure game allows you free exploration through the colorful central town with fun town folk that provide additional quests and entertainment. But be prepared to test your skills and face off against famous bosses like Rob Lucci, Caesar Clown, and more. I haven't seen One Piece. Like I said, the names of the villains make me want to get into One Piece. Seems like it might be up your alley, man. I feel, I feel like it might be worth giving a shot. A lot of people have been excited about this game. Uh, what was that price again? Uh, the price of it was thirty nine ninety nine. So it's cheap for a whole lot of One Piece. If you haven't played it before, if you're a fan of the series, you're probably definitely going to want to check it out. Um, I know these games do like very well. Same with the Naruto mm-hmm. games. I've never played them, though. Um, I do the DBZ games. And I was really disappointed with the Xenoverse. Not going to lie. Real disappointed there. Um, that being said, would I try this? Absolutely. Somebody let me know about One Piece. Get at me. I'm at Seth Trav. Awesome, man. And we're going to go ahead and close it out with the very last title. This has been almost 30 minutes of new releases. Um, we almost always try to, we always do cover all of them in, in this segment because I feel like it's important that we talk about them. Um, I know not everyone has the time to go through and browse the, uh, the eShop to find out what's going on. So I feel like it's, it's great to give you guys the option of just being able to listen uh, on it, like on, like in your car. Um, that if being we didn't do this, show, I would have no idea about most of these titles. There's so, there's so many of them. And like, like we, like we research, I know I I spend time looking like at the like right after this show I always go and check to try to see what's coming out next week but then all these things kind of just appear in like the last couple of days they so drop we, we try like with like, a day's notice like I sent out a lot of emails like I'm on top of it but uh, st- <laughs> something still some some stuff still gets by but what I wanted to say before we get to the last one is like if you guys like like when all like when we have ten releases when they all come out like this if you enjoy that um let us know over on Twitter at Switch It Up Show and you know on the flip side of the coin if you're like I just wish they would get to the reviews then go ahead and let us know that too because I know this is a lot and if you're 
if you prefer that we choose like four or something on these like giant weeks, then by all means, we'll do that. Um, but until then, I feel like it's important that we share everything with you. And the last thing we're going to be uh, talking about will actually be featured on an upcoming episode, and that is Wolverblade. Wolver- Wolverblade is a visceral arcade side-scrolling beat-em-up set in ancient Rome and Britain. Up to two players battle side by side to defend northern tribes from an invading Roman army. Fight across eight real locations as the rich, historically inspired story unfolds before you. Featuring classic arcade beat em up action for two players, classically inspired arcade combat engine, a rich and engrossing historically inspired story, battle across eight British locations in the rich campaign, fight in many arenas to hone your tribal warrior skills and stunning 2D artwork and animation. And might I say they are not, um, they're not like exaggerating. The art in this looks really awesome. It looks really cool. It looks like you're looking at like a cartoon. Um, I can't, I can't wait to play this game. This looks awesome. Um, they don't have a price announced yet. They don't have a date announced yet. It just says September, um, September of this year. So, Sometime, hopefully by the 30th, yeah, as the long as it doesn't three, get delayed. Four days. Yeah, it's, get this. it's possible, I guess, that it could get delayed. You never know. You do see that sometimes, but hopefully not. Uh, and I can't wait to. I can't wait to check it out. That is Wolverblade, over on the Nintendo eShop, and that closes out the new releases. Oh my gosh! Whew! My dude, I I wish we had an actual count of that. That's a lot. Yes, sir. Yes, it is. I think it was like like 10 or 11. Now. I cut the music there for a moment, and you're hearing like this new intro, and that's because we're about to debut a new segment right here on the Switch It Up show, and that's the I Wish It Was On The Switch segment, where we feature a game that we're kind of just like really looking forward to. Might be on a different platform, but for some reason, it's just not on the Switch yet. So these might forward on the Switch. I ah, love it, man. See, so like we're like we're the same heart. You're like right there with me. Um, <laughs> so this might be games that like are maybe have a plan of switch release or don't but i feel like we want to talk about it kind of maybe start that buzz and who knows maybe if we get lucky maybe one day it will come to the switch uh and the game that i'm going to be talking about today that i was fortunate enough to be able to check out and play ready for this one if you if you're talking about having a hard time pronouncing something it is danganropa v3 killing harmony now, whew, yeah, I know, right? Now, this game actually came out just this past Tuesday, so we're one day past the release date, uh, and it came out over on PS4, PS Vita, and t- on the 29th, this Friday, it's going to come out on Steam, so you're going to be able to play it on a PC, so kind of about three platforms there. Um, so there are some other places you can play it at. So I'm kind of hoping that based on the fact that it's out on a few other things and there are a lot of other like anime centric games coming out onto the Switch, maybe if we play our cards right, we'll get this one. Um, have you ever um, have you ever played any of these games? Are you familiar with the series or anything like that, Mr. Trav? I am not. It looked like sort of a choose your own adventure style gameplay, uh, sort of like the Telltale series. It's uh, it, I could definitely, I definitely agree with you. It is, uh, it has a little bit uh, of that within it. Um, it's basically what they, what, I, what's called a visual novel game. Um, I bet you, you have probably played. Have you played Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney? No, I have not. But my girlfriend plays a game series called Mystic Messenger, which is the exact same thing. Oh, awesome. Okay, so basically, um, this is a visual novel type game where you are basically, you're, it's like an interactive story. Um, so mm-hmm. with these games, the story, like you, first of all, just a quick pause. This music's great. Um, <laughs> this is also it really uh, is really good. <laughs> this music is Anamanaguchi as well. Again, in the profile, um, in the show notes, you'll see it. Check it out. This is really good. Uh, glad, glad we chose this one. Um, but visual, <laughs> visual novel game. Um, the story, like you know, it, it's it's really important because it's the bread and butter. Um, there are other gaming, like traditional gaming aspects to uh, this game, but for the most part, like it, it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of reading, um, which is uh, can either be good or bad. But personally, I had a great time uh, playing this game. Um, basically, the uh, idea here, I'm going to go ahead and read you the synopsis. It says, Welcome to the new world of Danganronpa, 
your and prepare yourself for the biggest, most exhilarating episode yet. Set in a psycho cool environment, a new cast of 16 characters find themselves kidnapped and imprisoned in a school. Inside, some will kill, some will die, and some will be punished. Reimagine what you thought high stakes, fast paced investigation was as you investigate twisted murder cases and condemn your new friends to death. Forget what you thought you knew about Danganronpa and join a completely new cast of Ultimates for a brand new beginning. Featuring murder mysteries in a world where everyone is trying to survive, nobody's motivations are quite what they seem. Use your skills to solve each new murder or meet a gruesome end. Lie, panic, and debate. The world is shaped by our perception of it face Fast-paced trial scenes will require lies, quick wits, and logic to guide your classmates to the right conclusions. New minigames between the madness of the murdered peers and deadly trials enjoy an abundance of brand new minigames. Languages include traditional Japanese and new English voices, plus new English subtitles. I thought that was really cool when uh, you start this game up, you immediately get the option to be able to use the Japanese language or the English language. So, um, since so much of it Hmm. is an interactive storybook... Um, and it is, you know, like in, it's all like kind of in that anime, like manga style. It mm-hmm. really does feel like you're watching like a movie. So it can be helpful to like if you really want the authentic experience to use the Japanese language. Now, personally, for me, I chose the English language because I wanted to be like fully like into the story. I wanted to know what was going on um, because in this basically you are one of 16 characters or 16 ultimates what an ultimate is is an ultimate is um in this in this sense it's one of the students that uh, that is kidnapped and found awoken in this high school and they all have like an ultimate talent something that they're like really really good at um my character was the ultimate pianist so she was super talented when it came to playing the piano and you go around (laughs) and and you meet a whole bunch of other uh students who are ultimates themselves who excel at whatever their um you know whatever their talents uh, are and they range from like all types of um like maybe like normal things like there's one where um she is she's a magician or a mage she's convinced that she like does actual real magic um although you never it's always kind of like you know it, it, can she or can she not uh and then there's another one that is the ultimate child caregiver so like they have all types of like crazy titles uh and it's it's neat though because when you meet these characters like some of them are just like really like are just they're so silly and they're so nice that you just, I don't know, you like them. Like you think they're like, Oh, like these, these characters are cute. You want like good things to happen to them. But as time Mm -hmm. goes by and you're in the school and the story starts to unfold, um, we kind of realize that everyone's been trapped and like just, locked away in this high school and they're not going to be able to get out unless one of them commits a murder so if one of them commits a murder um they'll actually have to proceed into a trial to try to see if the murderer can actually get away um and like get themselves off in this trial um and like get away with murder and then uh they can go free uh so it's it's really it's really interesting it reminds me of like the hunger games meets battle royale meets phoenix Wright ace attorney um it's like a bunch of different things like in terms of movies and like games going on the it's an it's a mature rated game um like the jokes are yeah, kinda, the, the jokes are kind of all over the place if you head over to our website www.preach.us you can check out um the link to the twitch is in there i think it's twitch.tv slash preach network um you can actually watch i'd play the prologue because the 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 game i almost said movie because that's what it feels like the game is divided up into the prologue and the main story um the prologue is like the first i think four chapters and then you it, everything kind of unfolds and that's when you get into like the real meat of the story Story. But the prologue itself is about a good hour, hour and a half long. It's not short. Um, so there's a lot going on there. Uh, and then the actual game starts. So there's a lot here. Um, one thing I like about this is that when I was playing it, I was really engaged in the story. Like I really wanted to know like what happened next. Probably started playing it um, the first time I picked it up around like 8 o'clock at night. Before I knew it, it was 1230. Um, so a lot of time can go by. Um, that being said... Like this is a game that you want to make sure, at least my experience, you want to make sure you have the time to to play it and that you can like dedicate that time to it because it's so 
it's so deep in its story and there's so much going on and you're trying to suck in like all the details so you know kind of who you want to investigate who you want to spend more time with um that like you know you you don't want to be like tired when you play this game Uh, you need to be alert because later on once the story progresses and you move into the trial phase like not you have to make sure you ask the right questions um give the right responses whether you're gonna lie or not what type of inflection you're gonna go ahead and put on how you're talking to somebody um so there's there's a lot uh, at stake um, basically the day uh, is um, divided up into like possible mini games uh, free time where you actually get to go and visit with some of these other ultimates spend time with them learn about them a little bit more and then usually at the end of the night similar into like battle royale there's like a message that comes across the screen um, uh, from your from your captors and you'll learn like a little bit more about what's going to happen the next day um this is this is this is a fun man this is a fun game man this is a roller coaster ride uh and i think it would be like perfectly at home on the switch uh if you look in the japanese eShop, there are all types of visual novel games that do not have support here currently in the, in the united states not only do they, are they just not here even if you were to create a japanese um eShop account and download them there's no english option um you know this game would kind of like fulfill that need if it ever came to the switch um personally like i, I would love Love to be able to play this on a switch be able to take it with me portably and have it on a big screen like that's a huge advantage because right now i only have it on the ps4 although i did do remote play with the ps vita um like you know up uh, upstairs uh, in my bedroom and i thought like it, it did great it didn't lag at all and i've done remote play with some other games that you know were like a little a little spotty this thing was like spot on perfect i, I really had a good time with it um if you are interested in like um visual novel games if you like horror if you like saw if you like um phoenix Wright ace attorney if you like anime if you like the hunger games if you like games that involve relationships with other characters and like uh, like that are set in high school if you like persona um like you should check this out um there's a lot here i feel like there's a lot that approves um appeals to a bunch of different people danganronpa v3 killing harmony currently out on ps4 ps vita coming out this friday on steam go ahead check it out if you've played it let us know what you think over on at switch it up show on twitter i would love to hear it from you because i had a great time with this game and hopefully you did too (laughs) (laughs) what would you rate that um for what this is um like personally like a visual novel uh game like this game like this is this is exactly up my alley man i'm gonna i'm gonna give this um i mean it's not like it's not like if they made like i guess the closest thing to this for me maybe would be the walking dead telltale game um Mm -hmm. i i i will say that with the walking dead telltale game like i was like like I was deeply emotionally invested in like <clears throat> those characters uh, where like I was like nervous every single time I played that game. Now that that game like um, kind of unfolded throughout like five or six chapters. Um, so there were, there's just a lot more game there um, had all the same characters kind of like followed along uh, in this series. Uh, it might be on the same level, but that being said, man, this is a four and a half for me. At least like, this is, this is, I feel like as good as it's gonna as it's right gonna, up there as huh? it's gonna get because like, I'm into all that stuff, man. Like they're trapped. There's all these like type of <laughs> crazy things going on. It's like horror. Uh, it's like battle royale. Phoenix Red Ace Attorney. Like it's all in there. This game has like all that it's got stuff. It, all. It, it does for me. It does have it all. And hopefully, Dude, hopefully it, it for you, it does great. too. It's a great time, man. You owe it to yourself to at least go out. Um, a bunch of people are streaming it over on Twitch. Obviously, you should start with us. But if you want to know a little bit more, um, by all means, poke around. But be careful um, because we just did the prologue over in our Twitch. So you won't really get any like big spoilers or anything like that. It's everything that's going to naturally happen within the first hour anyway. Nothing you know, big story wise, but a lot of people are streaming some of the other stuff out there. So you want to make sure that you don't ruin it for yourself because it's kind of like, you know, like I said, it's like reading a book or watching a movie. You don't really want someone to spoil the ending for you. hundred percent, man. Love it. Love it. Uh, last telltale thing I played was the Batman series. Uh, probably going to get into that. Uh, put that up on our YouTube as well. Awesome, dude. That was a fun series. I, I have fun with that. I love a good time. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, we got two big games to review for you today. Uh, it's let's play. First off, we're going to play dungeons. This is a sort of top down dungeon scrolling procedural. Pre- yeah. Procedural, procedural gener- procedurally generated, procedurally generated Your dungeon crawler, uh, game. It is like 
uh, getting thrown into Link's Awakening, like any dungeon in Link's Awakening, and just being told to go. And that's it. And you guys go. And you can choose between four characters. You've got a mage. You've got a wizard, which seemed redundant to me. Not gonna lie, like mage, wizard, same basic thing. Well, that was like um. Not gonna lie, uh, mage and wizard. Yeah, I guess I guess you're right. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Powers not too dissimilar. The wizard did shoot more uh, like fireball type things, whereas like the mage still had some hand to hand every now and then. What from what I was getting, um, what I was finding, because you can find different weapons throughout here, different keys, things of that nature. But that's it, man. Like, you literally go around and you build the dungeon you want. And you go up and down floors. Uh, you do the thing. It's a little tongue-in-cheek with the genre. It starts you out. You're sitting around a fire. And whatever guy you choose to be is like, hey, let's go to this dungeon. And everybody's like, yeah, let's all go together. And then one of them is just like, no, we're going to stay here and only you go. And the guy's like, what? Okay. And then you're in the dungeon. And that's it. And you play and you see what kind of score you can get. You see how long you last through the quest of donjons. Were you uh, were you into it? Was it was that up your alley? I was into it. I had a good time with it. Uh, it for what it is, it's it like I said, it's like kind of like a love letter to games like a uh, Link's Awakening, uh, the Zeldas of past, like the OG Zelda on the NES, things of that nature. Uh, it, it's fun graphically. It's sort of Genesis SNES style. Okay. Um, music was great. Music was so good. Uh, I would probably give this game a 3.5 out of 5. It's not a bad score, not at all. And I mean, if you're gonna, no, it's it's just like for a time killer. It's awesome yeah. to like sit down, pick at it, see how far you can get in a dungeon. Uh, if you're just trying to like burn an hour or two, and that's what you're into, absolutely do it. But there's not, like, a lot of story. There's not collectibles, because once you die, it's not going to carry over. you got to start all over again. So, that being said, it's like, difficulty's a little up there, maybe, because of that. I yes, don't know. Sir. It, it's, it's a different thing. It's simple. It's easy to pick up, but difficult to master. So, I'm going to give it the 3.5. That's totally fair, man. Totally fair. And you said uh, you got you got one more? Now, the next one I've got, I've been waiting for this one for a hot minute, and I'm so excited. It's Baby Beast Steez. Uh, uh. <coughs> there you go. Real life. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Real life here on the Switch. That's real life stuff happening on the Switch It Up show. Uh, I got to be talking all about Steam World Dig 2. Now, I did say I spent a lot of time with it. It was in my inventory this week, and I did. But I didn't realize I spent a lot of time with it because when I finished the game, I was like, that was kind of short. But it turned out I had actually spent nine and a half hours playing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, where did my life go? Now, I didn't play it with like, I've got to run through. I've got to try and get a gold star for my time in this game. I wanted to explore. I wanted to hear the music out. I wanted to, I like exploring. And there's 46 different exploratory like treasures you can find throughout the world of steam world dig two um and they're all kind of tongue-in-cheek they're all kind of like one makes fun of Grey's anatomy so <laughs> like it's stuff like that like one makes fun of kfc it's cool little like jokey things uh it's kind of an animated style it's car it's very cartoony uh you go into Mecron, I can't remember the name of the town, El, Me El Mecopolis or some nonsense like that. And you go around with these robots. They're like diggers is what their deal is. And they dig for minerals, things like that. And hopefully they could survive. Turns out that the guy from SteamWorld Dig 1, Rusty, has gone missing. And you have you are this girl, Rosie, I think her name was. Uh, and you play with this uh, little sprite guy that comes out and gives you like bad advice. He's, he's always like, you should just jump off this cliff. See how far you can get. Do a flip. Stuff like that. Um, it's cool. She has to go find Rusty. And everybody in the town thinks that he is like going to destroy the world. And he's the prophesied uh, occult figure that's going to destroy the world and tear it apart. Turns out there's bigger things at play. Ooh, find out the mysteries of SteamWorld Dig 2. I don't want to give too much away. But it was so much fun. 
I love leveling up. I love digging for nonsense. I love getting new minerals. I love the music. I love the graphics. I love the play style. Like I said, it felt short to me and like I wanted more, but it took me nine and a half hours. Nine and a half hours, man. Yeah. I'm going to give this game a 4.5 for beautiful. engrossing me and making me want to put down Destiny 2 yeah, and that's... just play Steam World Dig. That, that's a let me let me tell you something speaking as somebody who also um has a destiny 2 problem um like it is it, it is rare when a game like really really inspires you to pick it up um and and put down like destiny so um you know steam world dig 2 dongan roba v3 like congratulations they, they like, did it for us like i was i was totally like enveloped like i'm playing this game i gotta go to work the next day before i know it like almost five hours have gone by yeah. like i have a baby like I'm where like, like, where has I'm this time to call out. <laughs> I'm, I'm i am almost 30 years old and i was ready to call out of work so i could sit home and play steam world dig 2 and then i kept thinking like can i take my switch to work i mean you could it is portable. Maybe I could just play on lunch. You know? And then you think, well, are they going to take it if somebody catches you? No. You're going to be like, I'm doing a little something. What are you doing? <laughs> Who knows? Pretend it's I an Android know. tablet or something. Who knows, right? I'm going to maybe push it. Maybe I'm that addicted to my Nintendo Switch at this point that I'm just going to carry it with me at all times. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, man. I feel like that's good. That's an opportunity. It is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for greatness. As great as episode 18 of the Switch It Up show was. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's been me. I am at Seth Trav. He has been our friend Glenn. He's at From the Crib. Follow us at Switch It Up Show. Follow us also at Preachcast. Be sure to follow us on YouTube. Subscribe there. Be sure to look forward to the SNES Classic Unboxing coming up later this week as well as SNES Classic playthroughs, other awesome nonsense, and everything great. But we want to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that if things ever start to get boring, you just have to switch it up.